In this uh, quick tutorial, I want to go through how to set up view groups in Prepare 3D for my particular setup. This is my standard setup if you're using external Prepare 3D visuals with Elite. Elite being the simulation software, Prepare 3D being the scenery. And in this case, we've got three TV sets and they're angled at 110 degrees and 110 degrees between TV sets. That gives us an outside angle of 70 degrees or 70 degree uh, the outside TV screens are angled in 70 degrees from this plane. And that's what I normally use for a surround scenery setup. So how do we set it up so that the screens on the right and the left are properly synced to the center screen so that it all matches up? Well, the easiest way to do that is use view groups. So I'll hit the Alt button to bring up the menu. So let's uh, first click on the screen to bring the focus on that screen and the Alt button to set up the menu, to bring up the menu, which you can see at the top there. And then we'll go to Views, come down to View Management, go across to View Group Management. And there's the screen, View Group Management screen. And there are a couple of things there of note. If we look at displays and expand that to configurations, we can see that we've got, in this case, six outputs. We've got an integrated display on the motherboard being enabled through the BIOS so that we can use it, together with a NVIDIA GeForce uh, RTX 3080 as a dedicated uh, GPU. <coughs> now this may sound a little bit difficult to work out, might seem a little bit difficult, but you, get, you can see the Intel we don't really need, so we can in fact just get rid of the Intel ones there, just let's uh, remove them just to uh, make it easier. And then now how do we work out which TV is set up for which output? Well, the way I've got it at the moment is uh, the left screen, right center screen, and the right screen are connected to this GPU. And this GPU, the 3080, has actually four outputs. A HDMI on the left, the next three are display ports. The HDMI I'm actually using back here on one of the other monitors for the instructor station. And I know that in this case the 0, zero is the HDMI. So we don't really need that one either. Uh, we can leave it there. Zero, 01 0, 2 and 0, 3 are the three outputs, that the three display ports that go back to the TV sets. Now if you look at uh, 0, 1, you'll see it has a display ID of 1. And I've made it 1. If it's something else like 11 or 12, some weird number, there's no reason why you can't make it 1. Just change it to 1. 2 Zero 02, which is the next display port, is display ID 2. And 3, the last display port on the video card, is display ID 3. Now, it's in, these display IDs are important when we set up the view group. If you look at the view group down here, we opened it up. I've actually got two here already made up. One's a triple display, generic, which is an easy way to do this just an easy setup, works quite well. 
and I've also got a triple display pilot viewpoint and what that means is you can see here that the runway is aligned to the view that the pilot will have when sitting in the cockpit so you got to remember that uh, normally um, if you just generically set it up the runway will be down the middle of the TV screen if you're sitting to the left of that then you'll get a bit of a skewed view as you take off the runway this way we've done what we've done here is made the viewpoint in front of the pilot now that requires more calculation so we're not going to do that in this case if there there are ways of calculating these angles and uh, you can browse YouTube for example and get some ideas there and but in this case we'll just go through a simple generic runway down the middle of the TV screen so let's have a look at triple display generic now so when you set up a view group you want to add here so I go view groups normally these wouldn't be here as you go click on view groups add and then you've got another view group come up down here and you can call it whatever you want so um, we'll call it here into the value we'll call it uh, test because I'll get rid of it later so we'll call it test and we'll just allow zoom yes uh, grid setup we won't do that's an automatic uh, population of the three TVs in other words it calculates it automatically and sets it up for you this will not work when I've got six monitors connected three other monitors that I'm using and I don't want P3D on so if you're using a dedicated computer just for the three TV sets by all means use that it's a quick way of doing it a generic way of doing it without uh, any calculations but in my case because I'm using one computer with three TV sets and three other monitors that I don't want P3D to auto populate onto have to do this manually so we'll leave it as it is and we can now so the grid comes here it's blanked out because we're not going to use it we now need to add to this test group the left the center and the right tv sets so add and we'll call it um, uh, left oops sorry i need to click onto that and We'll call that left and then we'll come back to the test we'll add another one and we'll add another one so let's uh, we can just do it here as well we can just click on view 2 here and we'll call that center and view 3 We'll call that right. All right, so now we've named them. We need to now set up the side angles for each of these. So let's expand them. And what we call the side angles are calculated or are added in the view frustum. So if we go to the left screen there, go back across here, we'll see view frustum. Don't worry about edge overlap at this stage. Just leave it as it is. Don't worry about viewport. Leave that as it is. Go to view frustum and add. Edit. And this is where we want to edit the side angles. Now the easiest way that I've found for a generic setup with three TV sets like these is to just use that are set up at 110 degrees or 70 degrees in from the center screen plane we'll just add 35 for left so left is always minus minus 35 right will be plus 35 I found that uh, for the top and bottom 
that about 18 degrees works fine so 18 plus for the top and 18 minus now you can adjust these figures to suit what will happen is the top and bottom can be adjusted until you get a nice round gauges or in this case when we don't have any gauges we just got the scenery we want that perspective to look correct so if you find that things are squashed or expanded vertically too much uh, just um, alter those figures to get the right perspective now we also got to add the angle so the center is always zero angle and as I said we've got the sides coming in at 70 degrees so that's the Z so we'll make that 70 so in this case it's minus 70 for the left we'll go to the center and we'll go add view frustum edit zero for the angle and again we need to keep the left and the right and the top and the bottom the same so we'll go left minus 35 so I'm just using half of 70 from the middle of the screen left and right is how I it's just nice easy generic way of doing this 35 for the right the, the top and bottom have to be the same 18 and minus 18 we'll do the right in this case again add view frustrum edit in this case it's 70 degrees positive on the right and again the left right top and bottom so we've got left minus 35 right 35 18 and minus 18 okay so that looks pretty good it has a preview button here if we hit preview it just says more than one view center in a view group was mapped to the same display ID aha we've got to make sure as well that the IDs that we talked about up here for the outputs from the video cards match the TVs that we want the view frost rooms to work on so left I've got a display ID of one center ah same display ID so let's make that two now as you can see here if you're not sure let's go back to this zero one we've got a display ID of one so we're going to assume that that is the um, left screen it could be the right screen we'll soon see two we've got a display ID of two and three is three so let's go left uh, a display ID of one center we've got two right we've got we want that to be three and let's see what we get right click on the screen you go to view groups and um, yeah, let's move that out of the way right and go to view groups and you need to select which one on the right here which one you have which view group you're going to use so right sequence so you can see here that everything's looking pretty good and it's not too bad and as I say it's a generic sort of output it gets you going and uh, you can certainly experiment further well this will get you going as far as setting up view group management okay thanks for watching